right so we have completed our circuit diagram the last thing that's left is to explain the pin connections and i've done this in a slightly different way as i've mentioned before some people prefer to actually use a table but i prefer this method because it's just a lot easier to understand a lot easier to read for me and i think this is like really stupid simple so that's what i like to do so let me zoom in and all i'm doing is explaining how each thing is connected to the raspberry pi or to each other so i have my hall sensor first and i say pin one the analog pin is not connected i say pin two the ground pin connects to pin 38 of the raspberry pi pico and pin 38 if we go back to our data sheet pin 38 is ground so you can actually come in and say what pin 38 is i might actually do that so if i go back to my document i can say pin 38 is ground right i you can choose any ground pin for this it doesn't have to be 38 it doesn't have to be pin 3 i believe you can choose any ground pin you want it just happens that i connected mine to that one and i've said uh pin 3 again of the same hall sensor or the v plus pin connects to pin 40 i'm going to go back to my data sheet and pin 40 that top one is vbus so vbus and vsys i believe they both give 5 volts so double check that but i believe they both give 5 volts so I'm going to say V bus for pin 40. I'm going to just put a bracket and put V bus for that one. Uh, pin 4, digital pin of the hall sensor, again, connects to pin 34. If I go back and I look at pin 34, pin 34 is GPIO 28. So general purpose input output, or you could just say GP28. So when you're programming, this is what you actually put in. You don't say pin 34, you will say pin 28. So maybe it's a good idea to actually put all of that in. The buzzer, it, it only has two, um, two lines anyway. So a pin one I put to ground, that's pin 38, and I'm going to put that in brackets as well. And pin two, the positive pin goes to pin 25. And if I go back to my data sheet again, I can look at pin 25. And pin 25 here says GPIO 19 or GP19. So in my brackets, I'm going to put GP19. This is very descriptive, very simple, very clear, stupid simply, in fact. And I think this is how I would do it. There, you, you won't lose marks for doing it this way. There's no right or wrong way to do it, whichever way shows or explains how things are connected. And to me, this is probably the simplest way. Uh, red LED connections, cathode connected to pin 38. I believe that's ground again. Let me just do that. Uh, pin 22 on the raspberry pi pin 22 is going to be gpio 17 so gp17 let me make that caps lock and this one pin pin 38 again i'm going to do ground so this is the green led now and for pin 21 let me look at the data sheet again pin 21 is gpio 16 or gp16 gp16 now I go to my push to close button. A push to close button is just a piece of wire, but in any case, uh, pin one is connected to pin 40. I think that was V bus or V sys, but I'm gonna put V bus here. Uh, pin 20, let's go back to the data sheet again. Pin 20 is gonna be GPIO 15 or GP15, so GP15. And again, when you're programming, you do not put pin 20 in your Python program or in your C program. You're gonna put pin 15 because even though it's pin 20 the reason it works out as 20 is that for some reason raspberry pi foundation has given us four ground pins on one side and four on the other side i don't think that was a great idea it should have probably been maybe two on each side because they wasted six pins in my opinion after that i have my i2c adapter and i say pin one ground is connected to pin three of the raspberry pi and pin three of the raspberry pi is ground as well so I'll put ground there Pin 40, I remember that was VBUS, VBUS, or VSYS, whichever one it was. Uh, pin 6, let's go back to the data sheet again. Let's not do any guesswork. You will have a data sheet in the exam, so use it. Pin 6 is uh, GPIO4, so GP4, GP4, and I'm guessing pin 7 would be GP5. Uh, so let's do that. GP5, but let's double check again. GP5, yeah, one is SDA, one is serial data, one is serial clock, and that's it. That's how you do this section. There's nothing else you really need to do. And with all of that done, I think my activity three is more or less finished. So let's go back to the very top. So this is all the stuff I did. So the very last thing I did was the pin connections, which again, there is no right or wrong order to do this in. Once you have all the information there, it might make a bit of sense to have this first before the circuit diagram. But 
I wanted to connect everything first and make sure it's in the right place and then just simply write these down from my original connections. Go back up. I have my circuit diagram here. It's not really a circuit diagram to be fair. It's more of a, a breadboard diagram. Um, the schematic, let me open this again. The schematic would be the actual circuit diagram, but this is a bit messy. I can 100% make this way neater, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Above that, I have my flow chart, my flow diagram. And above that, I have my pseudocode. And above that, I have my block diagram. And above that, I have my parts list. So let me go over everything here one more time. So let's look at what they said we needed. The selection and justification of suitable input and output devices. That's going to be your parts list and your parts list justification. So here I've said the parts I'm going to be using. And I've also said the justification for each one. So why I'm going to be using that part. That's for the first point. A description of the system design covering input and output devices and microcontroller connections. That's the very last thing I did. If you wanted to move that up to the second thing, that's perfectly fine. But I think for me, it was a bit easier to connect everything first and then simply write down how I connected everything. And lastly, it says a plan for the program structure detailing key system operations. Now, this is supposed to be pseudocode or flowchart. Do not do both. I would do the block diagram for everything. The pseudocode you can do or you can do a flowchart. I recommend the pseudocode because it's going to be a lot quicker to do. And if time is something that you don't think you have a lot of, then I would simply go for the pseudocode. The flowchart is nice. I think it's very pretty, very nice, a very nice way to describe the system if you know what you're doing. But uh, pseudocode is just a lot simpler. And then after pseudocode, I've got my circuit diagram as well. And after circuit diagram, again, I have my connection. So that's all of activity three completely done. When I have the website up and running, I'm going to make sure I put this document up there with the 2022 past paper and also the 2022 examiner's comments and also my code and my components parse list. I'm going to make sure I supply everything as much as possible. Hopefully that was useful. I'm not going to be focusing on activity four just yet. What I am going to be doing is I'm going to be working on a different playlist and that playlist is just going to be called PyPico. And what I'm going to be doing in there is doing individual components. Activity four is going to need you to connect things and program things. What I'm going to show in this playlist here is how to program individual things. So for example, how to program an external LED, the internal LED, the temperature sensor, how to add a potentiometer, how to, how to add a motion sensor, a sound sensor, fire, a fire alarm, a buzzer. I'm going to show all of that stuff with schematics. So I'm going to do a schematic of the component and then I'm going to actually plug it onto a breadboard. Hopefully I can show that stage as well when I'm doing stuff on the breadboard and then I'm going to program it. So that way I can build up, let's say, a bank of how to connect things, how to program things. So when it comes to you guys actually learning how to do stuff, you can go through those videos and find what's common between all components and then figure out how to connect them and how to program them. So hopefully that was useful. And thank you guys for watching.